Since the beginning of time, man has waged war upon man. The reasons for these conflicts have become obscure in the minds of present-day generations. But the acts of heroism and the courage of those who fought the battles live on through battlefield art and volumes of historical accounts describing these events of the past. Whether by the printed word, paintbrush, or camera, the soldier in his time of trial has been forever captured by a gifted few who knew him well. Regardless of where the battles took place, there have always been combat historians and battlefield artists who have faithfully and accurately portrayed the events of the time with vivid descriptive works which live on long after the last shot has been fired. To explore this interesting subject, here is one of the nation's foremost cartoonists, the creator of the Beetle Bailey cartoon series, Mr. Mort Walker. Hello. In just a moment, I'm going to show you how the Army's heritage in the struggle for man's freedom is preserved forever in words and pictures by the men who risk their lives and devote their talents to seeing that these events, these great moments in the history of our nation, will be forever remembered through the might of the pen. about the ambush that you sprung on the 12th. Did you have anyone else with you besides your own platoon? Yes, we had three... Today's combat historian uses a tape recorder to gather his information. Okay, what was your total... The soldiers tank? themselves tell what has happened. The job well, of the historian myself, is to compile a complete and accurate on-the-spot account of our U.S. Army what troops kind of in action. Did you have them broken down the soldier himself, well, the combat historian, a is especially trained for his assignment and knows what questions to ask, what facts okay. to gather. How many people is that in each section, and how many people did you have totaled in the command group? Well, I had six in the command group, and that would have been about uh, three per section, and about six or eight in the command. Project in the offices of the Army's Chief of Military History in and, Washington, uh, D.C., uh, professional history writers the evaluate the tapes recorded in the field, and piece by piece, the factual report of a given military action is assembled into an historical recount. That's what uh, our AP was. The history of the United States Army during World War II was compiled in these 70 volumes by the Office of the Chief of Military History. This work is the most complete history of its kind ever assembled. Wherever there is a need to know our nation's military history, these books are used as a teaching text. Aside from their use in teaching the Army's future officers at West Point Military Academy, these history books are often consulted by historical novelists, by Hollywood's motion picture people, and by educational institutions. Now there's a new series being produced under the title, The United States Army in Vietnam. I was just looking at this volume on small unit actions. Somehow, it doesn't even seem like a history book. The words come to life and conjure up mental pictures so real, it seems as though you yourself are there. Listen to this. The scene is the Lang Bay Special Forces Camp on Highway 9, only 35 kilometers south of the demilitarized zone. It is the night of February 5th, 1968. It was just after midnight. Shrouded by the blackness, Five Soviet-built T-34 tanks crept steadily northward up a narrow trail from the shell-scarred village of Lang Troai. They were less than a kilometer south of the camp at Lang Bay. Behind them, wearing green uniforms and steel helmets, their weapons at the ready, two platoons of heavily armed North Vietnamese infantry hunched along in the dust and exhaust heat raised by the tanks. As the first two tanks their commanders perched in the cupolas, 
reached the barbed wire barrier around the camp, a trip flare ignited. It bathed the green metal tanks and dust-covered soldiers in an eerie, flickering light. For just a second, both the camp's defenders and the enemy force were transfixed, staring at each other. Then, both sides began firing furiously. The battle for Lang Day had begun. The printed word. Years from now, generations of young Americans will be reading these pages, and through them, will gain a full understanding of what it was like to live and fight in Vietnam. The War Art Collection of the United States Army now numbers more than 13,000 paintings. Here in the Pentagon, some of those paintings are hung in the corridors. Dating from America's early military history to the war in Vietnam, these paintings are in the keeping of the Office of the Chief of Military History. It is part of their mission to gather, preserve, and arrange for display of America's war art. In the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., is one of the most impressive exhibits of war art to be shown by any nation. Over the years, many outstanding artists have created classical artworks depicting men at war. The paintings in this gallery are but a few examples. Let me show you some of them. At a large timber windfall on the banks of the Maumee River, two regiments overtook the Indian forces and routed them completely. After that, the way was open for settlers to occupy the valley. Here is a stark portrayal of the fighting at Vicksburg during the Civil War. On the 19th of May, 1863, the 1st Battalion of the 13th Infantry charged the Confederate defenses occupying a bluff above the city. The Union forces suffered 43% casualties as a result of the attack but nevertheless continued to the top of the hill. In this work, we see the first use of a machine gun as an infantry support weapon. It was at San Juan Hill, Cuba, on the 1st of July, 1898. Gatling guns were rushed to the forefront of the fighting between the Americans and the Spanish forces. The unexpected machine gun fire decimated the Spanish troops and was decisive in our capture of San Juan Hill. During World War I, the Germans mounted their final great attack in the Marne River area along the road to Paris. This graphic painting shows how two U.S. infantry regiments engaging in their first combat withstood everything the Bosch could throw at them and drove the enemy back. The title of this piece is Rock of the Marne. Twenty-five years later, we were fighting in Europe again. Depicted here, are the men of the U.S. 9th Armored Division at the Remagen Bridgehead on the Rhine River. Despite the fact that the bridge was mined by German demolition teams, the Americans struck with such daring and speed that they prevented the Germans from blowing up the bridge. The Allied forces flowing across this bridge contributed decisively to Hitler's defeat. Here we have a cold winter scene from the war in Korea. American, French, and Dutch troops have been cut off in the long, narrow valley of Chipyong Ni. After three days of intensive fighting against the Chinese Red Army forces, an American armored unit broke through the enemy trap. This shows the 23rd U.S. Infantry Combat Team as they fought their way out of the enemy encirclement. The war in Vietnam is totally different from any other type of warfare a country has had to fight. In this colorful painting, done by today's combat artists, we see our troops being delivered to the combat zone by flights of helicopters. The scene is typical of the daily combat operations in Southeast Asia. The dense jungles of South Vietnam provide excellent cover for the enemy's movements. This painting shows one of our battle-hardened jungle patrols as they surprise a Viet Cong ambush patrol 
on the way to lay a trap for the Americans. You may wonder where the artists who paint these scenes come from. Mostly they are artists who have been artists before entering the service. Under the volunteer artist program of the OCMH, many of these talented soldiers apply for a special tour of duty to serve as combat artists for the Army. Each year, the Office of the Chief of Military History sends volunteer artists to Vietnam. These artist teams, composed of both military and civilian artists, are selected from the many hundreds who apply for the assignment. In Vietnam, their mission begins as they report in to the theater crafts director, who has come to the airfield at Ben Hoa to greet them. The crafts director arranges their assignments, their transportation and billeting. From his office, they obtain all of the art supplies and cameras needed to accomplish their mission. And so the adventure begins. Even that first ride to headquarters camp is fascinating to the inquiring eyes of the artist, whose mind instantly captures the moods and colors of the passing countryside and its people. For the next 60 days, this barracks and art studio will be home to the men of the team. From this place, they go out on field trips to search for scenes which express their impressions of Vietnam. To the Army combat artist, this means going to where the action is. Subjects which the army artist may desire vary greatly. This man is en route to a forward area bivouac where he can draw scenes of a combat rifle platoon at work in the battle zone. In the pursuit of their assignments, these men travel by whatever means available to reach their destination. At the camp, the artist is met by the officer in charge and the artist is briefed on the situation there. Once in the field, each combat artist begins to gather his basic working material. If the man is a quick sketch artist, he will, in just a few fleeting moments, outline a scene on his drawing pad. When the situation demands, the combat artist often uses a camera if he thinks his subject may change suddenly. Photos capture the scene instantly, allowing the artist to study it at his leisure. He will make his sketches when time is more favorable. To depict the soldier's life in Vietnam, the artist tries to put down as many of his impressions as possible. Everything he sees is of interest to him, especially those situations he knows he will not see elsewhere once he leaves Vietnam. The day-to-day -day air support activity provides many good scenes for the inquiring artist. The big field guns used to knock out enemy targets many miles away are awe-inspiring to watch and make an excellent subject for the army artist. Men of the armored unit and their machines are striking subjects for the artist. The amount of detail captured in these field sketches is truly amazing. Riverine patrol boats and their operations on the many waterways of South Vietnam offer still another type of subject matter for the artist. Regardless of where the combat artist goes in Vietnam, whether it be a remote outpost in jungle country or along the thriving streets of Saigon, 
the subject of most interest to these men is people. For the artist, the attitudes and expressions of those he sketches are what tell the story, even when they're performing a simple daily duty, like the MP who works with the Vietnamese police at a highway checkpoint. Soon, the days spent in gathering material in Vietnam are over, and the artists head for Hawaii and another round of serious work. In Hawaii, far from the battlefield, the combat artists work from their original sketches to create the paintings which will be added to the nation's collection of war art. In these studios, the rough sketches take on depth and fullness of detail. In the skilled hands of these artists, the paintbrush seems to once again bring to life the men and the moment when the scene took place. months of danger and hard work undergone by the combat artist culminate in public showings of his work by many responsible institutions, such as banks, libraries, and various civic organizations or schools. The paintings are made available from the office of the Chief of Military History. The United States Army has a constant requirement for many kinds of artwork, ranging from poster paintings to magazine illustrations, like the cover of this well-known Army publication. Because of this need, some Army artists are given a military occupational specialty rating of illustrator. One of the most interesting fields in military art is the work of Army cartoonists. These men capture the humorous side of Army life today just as Bill Malden did in World War II with his hilarious drawings of the two infantry soldiers, Willie and Joe. The cartoonist is not only a fine artist, but is gifted with a special talent to see the humorous side of every situation. This drawing was done by today's noted Army cartoonist, Specialist Six Bill Dolan. He bridges the years between World War II and the war in Vietnam very successfully by showing the World War II heroes, Willie and Joe, seated in the background. In the foreground, Dolan's own characters, two modern-day infantrymen, Private Muldoon and the top sergeant, look suspiciously at Willie and Joe. The top says, you know, Muldoon, I can't get over the feeling I know those two from somewhere. Specialist Dolan's cartoons, like this one, are published in Army news features and other media under the serious title, Up Country. His two cartoon characters, Muldoon and the top, are known to all our young servicemen everywhere. Specialist Dolan has just returned from one of his field trips to Vietnam, and he has some interesting new material to show us. Hi, Bill. Nice seeing you again, Mort. Good to see you. You know, I've been following the adventures of Beetle Belly and the gang at Camp Swampy for many years. No kidding. Cartoon drawing has always fascinated me, Bill, so the pleasure is mutual. Was I right when I said that it is the cartoonist's observation of the little things in life that makes the humor? 
Oh, very much so. In fact, there are quite a number of these little situations in my upcountry series. Most of my drawings are based upon some real incident which I've experienced while traveling in Vietnam. As you know, Mr. Walker, the war in Vietnam is quite different from any other war we have ever been in. Our technology is oriented toward air mobility. And the type of terrain our men are fighting over is largely wilderness, jungle, and a vast network of waterways. Even the farming communities are of the most primitive backwoods character. These people are living in an age similar to our earliest pioneers. With rare exceptions, there are no big towns to be taken, and the enemy does not meet us with any mass mechanized forces as the Wehrmacht in World War II. In addition, the wild beasts and other creatures found in the wilderness country of Southeast Asia play an important role in the everyday lives of our men there. Even so, a foxhole is still a foxhole. Mud is mud. Tired feet are still the trademark of the infantry. In 1965, Bill, the National Cartoonist Society named you the most talented cartoonist in the armed forces. Could we see some of your work? OK. Here's one. We see TV newsmen, newspaper photographers everywhere in Vietnam today. I don't think there's ever been any war more thoroughly photographed, written about, or televised than the one in Vietnam. The soldiers are quite familiar with TV news cameras of the various networks, and every man has a little ham in him. Here Muldoon is talking to a cameraman saying, don't forget, when the shooting starts, stay on my left, because that's my best side. Of course, the top is a little annoyed with him. That's one of those true ones we were talking about, Bill. This was based on a true incident. A bunch of guys got together and sent in a lifetime subscription to a popular men's magazine, and they told the magazine editor they wished more than anything else that they could be visited by a beautiful hostess from one of the magazine's clubs. Well, the next thing they knew, there she was. So I have the top explaining the uh, incident to the old man. I'm not kidding, Captain. The little creep actually wrote a letter to this magazine editor asking for a bunny for Easter. Captain? Captain? Well, that's a classic. This was also based on a true experience. In this cartoon, I have Muldoon bringing a big tiger into camp as his mascot. You can see the men don't understand this sort of thing, and they're running for their lives. Well, I got this idea when I heard that a couple of men had just killed a tiger and were bringing it back to camp. So I rushed right over there, and sure enough, there was the tiger. I drew a picture of him in the spot and put him in a comic situation. Oh, but darn, I didn't know there were tigers in Vietnam. Oh, yes, and a number of other animals and creatures you'd only think of as being in the circus or zoo I went up to a special forces camp in Mountain Yard country one day and ran into a very interesting situation. The special forces commander there was in the middle of hiring some elephants to help clear the big logs off the campsite. And I made this fine line sketch of it. It certainly is an excellent drawing, Bill. You know, I see you do fine artwork as well as cartoons. Do you have any other ones? Yes, I brought several with me. Actually, most of my work is illustrating army publications and doing covers. This is a recent cover for Signal, an army publication. Not only is that a great drawing, but that's a, you really captured the action there. That's great. And here in the Army Digest is an example of my illustration work. Those are Vietnamese civilians I did recently in Saigon. Marvelous. That's an entirely different technique, too. You really are versatile. Isn't that the dry brush? Yes, it is. You certainly have a lot of talent, Bill. Thank you, Mort.
When it comes to real talent in the oil painting field, in illustration, I'd like you to meet a buddy of mine, okay? Fine, I'd like to meet him. Hello, Bill. Good to see you. Bob? Ward, I'd like you to meet Specialist 6 Bob George. We work together at the U.S. Army Command Information Unit in Washington. Oh, Bob. Nice to meet you. I see you do the serious type of work. I guess you could say that, Mr. Walker. The Army uses my work to illustrate various publications, uh, brochures, pamphlets, illustrate stories. Great. I'd like to see some of it. Sure. Here's one here. This is a mountain yard woman from the Central Highlands around Play Coup. They're very typical of that area. Yeah, that's marvelous work. Beautiful. Here's another one. This is a, an American trooper in a firefight. This is in Tainan Province. I like that. How do you get an action drawing like that? Well, I like to start with a photo and then take it from there. Now, here's something a little different. Here I've used felt tip pen. It gives me a wide variety of shading. I see what you mean. There certainly is a lot of detail in it. Bob, there's a lot of little special tricks he uses, Mort. I especially like his work in the acrylic medium. Bob, do you have anything like that to show us? Yes, sir. This is one of my latest paintings. It depicts the Vietnamese Regional Popular Forces at Chow. They're commonly known as rough puffs. They're sort of, of a militia. Very effective. This is excellent work. Specialist George, I think you should be very proud of the work you're doing. Down through the ages, many brave and gifted men have gone into battle with our country's fighting men to capture on canvas the unforgettable deeds of heroism performed by the American soldier in time of war. This nation's heritage of freedom, through the courageous sacrifices of her patriots and the role we have played in helping other nations to defend their liberties, is vividly recorded in these great paintings. These works of war art have been given into our care as a national treasure so that these heroic chapters in the history of our great nation will be remembered through the might of the pen. <laughs>